All right, so this problem is called rotate array. And so basically what they're doing here is they're going to give you a K value. And then uh, your job is to essentially rotate a portion of this array that many indices to the right. So uh, when they say three, you shift everything to the right. So seven falls off the end, six falls off the end, five falls off the end. And essentially they end up at the beginning here. So you have five, six, seven, one, two, three, four. Also keep in mind, I don't see it here, but uh, you do have to consider they could give you something like, uh, let's say a value larger than how many actual values you have here. So they could give you eight. And in that case, we just wanna basically mod our value, get the remainder of K because it would be the same. So if you rotate this eight times, you're just doing a full rotation, everything goes through, you have the exact same uh, order after seven rotations, then you'd be left with one left and that final rotation would shift that seven to the front right there. So now that we know what we need to do, uh, let's think about the different approaches we could do that are used to do this. Whether maybe we sort it, well, we don't wanna do that. We do need to keep the original order so we can eliminate that. Uh, maybe we take an extra array that we store values in and maybe we start uh, you know, moving values from here to another array, but that's extra memory space. And I'm not really sure if that necessarily helps us uh, where we want to go. So maybe the better way to approach this would be uh, considering other ways that we could tweak numbers. And so, uh, you know, you'll get used to this as you work with array problems. Sometimes reversing an array might help you do something that's a little bit, uh, you know, different. So let's see, if we reverse the array, you'd have seven at the beginning, one at the end. And then that actually looks pretty similar as to where you know we wanna go almost. So if we reverse it completely, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, then in that case, now we're left with almost what we need, but what if we reverse it again? So this is not something that would necessarily be intuitive to you right away. But as you start to work through these array problems, you'll start to learn different tricks and, and ways to try to manipulate the data to get what you want. So when I say this is that you have seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. If you then reverse only the first three, so if you had seven, six, five, and you reverse those, you get five, six, seven. And then at that point, you'd have four, three, two, one, and you would have one, two, three, four, if you reverse that back. So you can see how this works. So let's just go ahead and implement this now. So we're going to need to update our K when it's larger than our list size. And we also know that our list size will at least be one. So we don't have to worry about checking to see if it's uh, null or if it's zero or anything like that. So K will equal K and then mod. So modulus the uh, size of our array. All right, so that makes sure that if we had a size seven array and K was eight, after we do this uh, modulus operation here, we'll end up with one. So like I said, it's that full rotation through everything, and then we're back to where we need to be. So additionally, we know that our approach is going to be to reverse the numbers. So we should write a function that reverses numbers. So we'll just say void, and then we'll take a, uh, function where we take an integer array and we'll say just array and we want to also know our start and our end. So after you know that, uh, one of the common ways to reverse an array is you just use a while loop when you know the start and the end and you can say while the start is less than the end and now you can say that you have to store, keep in mind, a temp value because otherwise you're going to try to swap indices and you'll lose track of those values. So your temp value can be the start or the end. In this case, we'll just make it the start. And now we'll reassign the start to the end. And then we'll also assign the end to temp because that's what start was. And now all we need to do is increase our start and decrease our end. 
and that will end up causing these to eventually uh, break this while loop. So now the final thing we need to do is we're just going to reverse the entire array. So we will do reverse and then it'll be nums. Then we'll do zero and nums dot length and it'll be minus one because we don't want to go uh, an index out of bounds for our array because obviously your last index in your array is not going to be array uh, nums dot length. It'll be minus one. And then now that everything has been reversed, we're just going to reverse that front piece and we'll reverse that last piece. So now uh, you're going to want to start at K because up here, uh, well, you could do either one, but you're in a C. So like I said, we want to reverse this front half and the second half. So this first one would be reversing the second half. So indices zero, one, two, and then three. This is where we'll start to reverse this piece. And so we'll say from K to the end of the array, which we already have there. And now we just need from zero to K minus one. That's it, because that will reverse that first half as well. Now we'll go ahead and submit this. All right, and as you see, it was accepted. So your space complexity will just be constant space because you're using, for the most part, all the space you already had for the array. And the only thing you're really doing is just using the existing array to rearrange the elements and you have that temporary integer pointer. But other than that, uh, you're not adding any additional space, especially not using another array because you could have had in space if you were storing all these values in a separate array or if you use more than one array or anything like that. And then additionally, your time complexity is just going to be n because you're iterating through all of the elements when you first swap all of them. And then after that, less than that. So, you know, you could even start saying, you know, this is like some fraction of a value times n or like one, you know, one and a half times n or something like that. But all that still ends up ultimately simplifying to n. And so that is your time complexity. All right, if you have any questions about this problem, let me know in the comments below and please take a moment to like and subscribe for future content.